faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Kellogg's Pep. B-E-B, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman is unaware of the grave danger faced by Jim Olsen when the young reporter is trapped while attempting to carry out a plan to expose the enemies of tolerance. Say, gang, doesn't the golden sunshine look good to you when you get up in the morning? Yes, sir, almost as good as a bowl full of sunny, golden toasted Kellogg's Pep. And say, did you know that sunshine and Pep have something in common? Sure, they both can help you build strong bones and sturdy teeth. You see, sunshine makes bone-building vitamin D for you. And every serving of Kellogg's Pep gives you your whole daily minimum need of that very same vitamin D. Mighty important. Pep has an energy vitamin, B1, too. More than twice as much as in sun-ripened whole wheat. Plus, lots of doggone good eating. And don't forget the exciting prizes. A comic button in every package of Kellogg's Pep. There's a brand new second series now, you know. 18 different buttons to collect and trade duplicates with your pals. Pictures of favorite comic strip characters, Aggie in, the Little King, and Superman himself. They're mighty sappy looking and so easy to collect. You don't have to send in a single penny, not even a box stop. Fact is, you can't buy these comic buttons anywhere. All you do is to make sure Mom keeps your family supplied with plenty of Kellogg's Pep. And look inside every package for your exclusive prize. Ask Mom for P-E-P Pep, the sunshine cereal made by Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. And now, the adventures of Superman. In a daring and dangerous attempt to learn the identity of whoever is responsible for the organized campaign to build up racial and religious intolerance in the city of Metropolis, Jimmy Olsen, cub reporter for the Daily Planet, dressed in old clothes and masquerading as a young tub, visited the pool room hangout of a boy known as Muggs, the boy who set fire to Hoffman's drugstore and viciously attacked Danny O'Neill. It is Clark Kent's belief that Muggs and his gang of juvenile hoodlums are working for the organization behind the hate campaign. In yesterday's episode, as you remember, Jimmy met Muggs and, after paying a $20 initiation fee, was taken into the gang. However, when he left the pool room to call Clark Kent from a drugstore phone booth, he was followed by one of Muggs' lieutenants, a boy named Dutch, who overheard his conversation with Kent. As we continue now, Dutch is on his way back to the pool room to tell Muggs that Jimmy is a spy. Kent, over the phone, has instructed Jimmy to hang up and remain in the booth. Swiftly, in the bedroom of his apartment, Kent strips off the business suit and horn-rimmed spectacles of the mild-mannered reporter, revealing the red cape and blue costume of Superman. Got to stop that boy. Stop him before he gets to the pool room. If he tells Muggs what he heard, we're licked. Up with the window. Out and away! <laughs> Leaping out into the darkness, the Man of Steel hovers for a timeless moment in curious flight. Then rockets across the city with the speed of a bullet. Below him now is the drugstore from Jimmy Phone. His sharp X-ray vision penetrates the black curtain of night and picks out the capped figure of a boy hurrying along a street two blocks from the store. Down he plummets, landing in a narrow alley hidden from prying eyes. Reaching beneath his cape, he produces Clark Kent's clothes and quickly steps into them. In a matter of seconds, he is striding down the street behind the boy, catching up with him as he nears the corner. Just a moment, son. Huh? I want to talk to you. Ah, your father's mustache. Hey, come back here. Let's got that car. Look out! <laughs> oh, we hit him, a stupid little fool. It wasn't my fault. I had the lights with me. He, he ran right into me. Nobody's blaming you. Is he? Is he dead? No, but he's probably badly hurt. He's unconscious. Put him in the car. I'll take him to a hospital. All right, I'll go with you. Open the rear door. Okay. Hold it open wide. That's it. Oh, it's terrible. Simply terrible. All right, close the door and get going. Where to? The Metropolis Hospital. What does it look like? 
Doctor? Well, it's hard to say, Kent. Uh-huh. No bones broken, but there may be internal injuries. We won't know until we do a set of x-rays. Uh, whatever it is, keep him in a private room and bill the Daily Planet. And above all, no visitors except myself. Well, we'll have to report this to the police, you know. Oh, that's okay. I'll clear it with Inspector Henderson. But remember, Doc, please, no visitors. I don't want that boy to talk to anyone. Why not? Because he knows too much. I thought I'd suffocate in that phone booth waiting for you. What took so long? Keep your voice down, Jim, till we get around the corner. All right. Okay, this is fine. Dutch is in the hospital, Jim. In the hospital? Yes. On his pool room, he ran across the street against the lights and was hit by a car. Jeepers. I don't think he was seriously injured. No broken bones. But he'll probably be kept under observation for a few days. Well, then, then that means we don't have to worry. He can't tell Muggs what he heard in the phone booth. Well, he won't talk for a while, at least. Long enough to give you a chance to get the information we need. Mr. Kent, how am I going to get it if Muggs is suspicious? If he keeps on sending guys out to follow me. You've just got to remove his suspicions. Uh, Yeah, but how? Well, for one thing, Jim, you'll have to go back to the pool room and tell Muggs about the accident. Otherwise, when Dutch fails to show up, he'll suspect you. Uh, Yeah, but how am I supposed to know about the accident? Well, we'll figure that out. Let me think. Maybe if I... Hold it, Jim, I've got it. Now, listen carefully. You go back to the pool room and tell Muggs that you were walking toward Market Street. I was walking toward Market Street, Muggs, and all of a sudden I heard this cop pull up short. Yeah? Turn around, and I could see he must have hit somebody. I ran over, but a couple of guys got there before me. They was carrying a guy who was hit into the car, and they were saying something about getting him to a hospital. You sure it was Dutch? Yeah, I got a good look at his face. I was going to tell the guys who were taking him to the hospital I knew him, but then I remembered what you said about keeping my lip button, so I didn't say nothing. You played it smart. If you opened up your trap, they would have took you to the hospital and asked you a lot of questions. Yeah, that's what I figured. Well, what do we do now? Nothing. We lay off. Dutch won't talk. Give him a phony name. There's only one bad thing. Yeah, what's that? I had a job for Dutch to do tomorrow night. Oh, how about me doing it? You? Yeah, why not? I know the ropes. But you don't know what we're doing. Oh, all you got to do is tell me. You know anything about cars? Automobiles? Yeah. Well, sure, I, I worked in a garage back in Philly. Oh, yeah? Yeah, sure. Okay, wait a minute. Hey, Charlie? Yeah? Anybody in the back room? Nah. Okay, Olsen. You look all right to me. Come on in the back room and low down. His throat dry and his heart pounding like a trip hammer, Jimmy follows the young gang leader to the rear of the pool room. What lowdown is Muggs going to give him? We'll know in a moment, so stand by. You know, I guess I'm a pretty forgetful guy. All week long, I've forgotten to put in a special plug for the girls who are collecting that brand new second series of comic buttons from packages of Kellogg's Pep. And everybody knows the girls get just as much fun out of these slick-looking buttons as the fellas do. No wonder. It's mighty exciting when Mom opens a new package of pep to see which button you'll find inside. Maybe a character from this new second series that you don't have yet, like Andy Gump with his brush-like mustache, or Lord Plushbottom, or the Little King, or even Superman himself. Or maybe it'll be a, du- du- a duplicate, I'm trying to say, kids. Got a little mixed up, didn't I? So that you can have even more fun swapping with one of your friends. But whichever comic strip character it is, it's bound to be doggone smart looking. Brilliant colors, red and yellow and blue and black, on a gleaming white background. These pep comic buttons sure do show up when you pin them on your jacket or your dress or cap. And they're so easy to get. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. They come only as prizes in packages of Kellogg's Pep. So ask Mom to get you some Pep tomorrow and look for your prize inside the package. That's P-E-P, Pep, the sunshine cereal made by Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Behind a closed door at the rear of the pool room that serves as a hangout for Muggs and his juvenile gang... Jimmy Olsen, swallowing nervously, waits for the young gang leader to tell him what he wants to know. Who is behind the campaign to spread hatred and intolerance throughout the city of Metropolis? Dropping into a chair, Muggs tilts it back against the wall, lights a cigarette, and blows a funnel of blue smoke toward the ceiling. Okay, here it is, Olsen. 
I'm going to deal to you right up the top of the deck, because I think you're the kind of guy I want working for me. Gee, thanks. Yeah, uh, you used your head when Dutch got hit by the car. Plenty of guys would have opened up their yachts. So I'll come clean with you. Dutch was telling you when you got hit. What? Telling me? Yeah, I sent him out to check up on you. Oh, yeah? What's the idea? In this racket, you got to be careful. You blew him with a story about a guy named Chuck Connors telling you to look me up. What do you up. mean, a story? Okay, okay, don't get sauce. I was wrong. Sue me. Okay. Well, where do we go from here? Now, look, here's a setup. We're working for guys with plenty of moolah. They got a job to do, and we're helping them out. We ain't doing it for love, but we ain't doing it for the dough alone, either. It's the kind of job we get a kick out of doing. Because it puts the skids under some of them foreigners lousing up the country. What are you looking at me like that for? Oh, oh Nothing. Nothing, only... Only what? I I was just thinking. Ain't everybody in this country a foreigner? I mean, we all came from some other place, or our folks way back did. Look, Stu, cut the talk. You know who I mean. We're out to knock over anybody who don't play ball, you get it? Yeah, yeah, I get it. Right now, these guys we're working for are out to bust up some kind of committee trying to raise dough to build a clubhouse for kids over on Sutton Street. Oh, what's wrong with that? Our guys don't like this setup. They got a Jew rabbi and a Catholic priest on a committee. And the way they get to give it out, they're going to open this clubhouse to any kid that wants to join. Don't matter if he's a Chinaman. How do you like that? Well, if the place ain't built yet, how can you bust it up? We're getting after the committee. We slept at the one of them night before last. Guy named Hoffman. He used to run a drugstore on the corner of Morton at 7th. <laughs> he don't run it no more. Oh, well, what happened? We burned it down. But that's only the beginning. Tomorrow night, we're going after a Mick, a guy named Murphy. What are you going to do? Wait till I tell you. We got it all rigged up to go over to see this. Hey, Mux, come on out here. What's up, Charlie? Dutch just come in. He says he got clipped by a car and they took him to the hospital. Yeah, I know. How'd he get out? Don't ask me. But he says he wants to see you bad. Here he comes. Petrified, the blood in his veins turning to water, Jimmy stares at the squat, full-necked owner of the pool room as he announces the unexpected arrival of Dutch, the boy who overheard his conversation with Clark Kent. Visions of what happened to young Danny O'Neill at the hands of Muggs and his gang flash through Jimmy's mind. Through the open door, he can see Dutch walking slowly toward the rear room, and with each step he takes, Jimmy can feel the jaws of the trap he is in tightening. Frantically, his eyes sweep the room. There are no windows. The only escape is through the door, and that, he knows, is blocked. What will he do? What can he do? Gang, don't miss Monday's thrill-packed episode no matter what happens. Every moment of it is tense and exciting as Jimmy, with the trap sprung, fights for his very life. So be sure to listen Monday, same time, same station, for the episode entitled The Hand of Fate. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pet. For excitement... The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday by the makers of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Friends, next week many communities will change time and this program will reach some of our listeners at a different hour. Consult your local newspaper or mutual station for the exact time in your area. Say, kids, if you're training your dog, try rewarding him for good behavior with Kellogg's Grow Pup. There's a dog food that makes a hit with dogs right from the word go. Gives them swell, meaty flavor and gives them three different kinds to pick from. Grow Pup Ribbon, Grow Pup Meal, and Grow Pup Pellets. All full of what it takes to help keep a dog right on the beam to help build strong bones and teeth and muscles.